In this episode, Mark's going to show you exactly how he installed these lights on our roof rack. Every detail, from the wire he used, the connectors and how he put them on, running the wires down from the roof, everything. He's also going to show you how to wire in a relay. Hey, it would help us out a bunch if you'd hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. These are the parts I used. There's a complete list with links in the video description below. Starting with the lights. These LEDs are made for the RV industry and the anodized aluminum housing is completely waterproof and they have this heavy duty wire coming out the back. They come with their own stainless steel bolts, nuts, and washers. The connectors I'll be using are incredibly durable, waterproof. They have the terminals that I'll be soldering the wires to and these seals. The wire is 18 gauge, both red and black encased in a five and a half millimeter diameter casing. For a very tidy installation, I'll be using 3 16 stainless steel cable clamps with this rubber cushion and a quarter inch mounting hole, along with everything necessary to tie them into a switch on the dash. Our roof rack uses this type of crossbar. It has these channels in it that will accept one of these little stainless steel T-nuts, slides right in, and then into those we could screw in a quarter inch bolt that will hold down our cable clamps. Or if your rack doesn't have channels like this, you can always use zip ties. Our roof rack from Southern Style Off-Road comes with these cutouts for lights. And it just so happens that the mounting holes are the same distance across as our new lights. With a little bit of thought and ingenuity, you can adapt these lights to virtually any rack. Before I bolt the lights onto the rack, I want to trim off a lot of this cord and put on one of these connectors. I've got it measured out at four inches. We'll just cut it right there. Then with a sharp knife, being very careful, I trimmed back the outer shield to one inch. Then the insulation on the wires themselves back a half an inch. Then one wire at a time, I take one of these little rubber seals, thread that on there, and then crimp on a connector. Then we can slide this rubber seal up and these longer tangs on the connector hold it in place. Bend those down. Then a little drop of solder to make sure this never comes apart. A little of the flux, heat it up. And that's all it takes. There is a controversy about soldering joints like this in an automotive application. The thought is that the joint is too rigid and because of the vibrations of the vehicle, the copper strands of the wire will break right at the edge of that solder joint. Now we have experienced that in connections like this where the wire coming out is largely unsupported and allowed to vibrate a lot. But when put in a connector like this where the wires coming out are very well supported stopping that vibration, we've never had a failure. I've got both terminals on, now we can put on this connector, but we need to keep the positive and negative straight. On the connector, the holes are marked A and B. We're going to make sure that on all the connectors we put the red wire, or the positive, into the A hole. A hole. You know what I mean. So we just take those terminals, put them in the corresponding, the proper holes, and then just push it together, push them in, until you hear them click. Both of them. And those won't pull apart. Then, once they're in there, you can slide this little keeper down over them, like this. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it'll go just like that until it clicks. Okay, three more to go. 
One more thing that I like to do to connectors like this is to put on some of this. This is called liquid tape. Uh, it's basically a really thick rubber paint. And this is going to make absolutely certain that this is waterproof and it'll strengthen these wires where they go into the connector. Now we can bolt the lights on. Put a bolt through the front, through the rack. On the back side put a lock washer and the nut. Now I need to make a wiring harness that will connect the two lights on each side and go down underneath the hood where we'll tie into the power. Now we'll wire in the other end of those connectors. Uh, they go together the same way as the other ones do. They do use a slightly different terminal in them, so make sure you get the right ones in. Now just like with the other half of these connectors, we want to make sure that the red wire goes into the hole marked A. Just slide them in until they click and they're locked in. Then we can swing this up. There, we're all done. And that is the connection for the rear light. Up here at the front light, I actually have to make a T in this main cable to go to our light. This is how I'm going to do that. In an application like this, what I do is I first strip back very carefully this outer shield. Then I strip back a tiny bit of the insulation on the red and black wires. Wrap our wires coming into the T around those wires and then put a drop of solder on them. Then to insulate these wires from each other and to make it waterproof, we go back to good old liquid tape and paint these up. We'll put three or four coats on these to make a nice solid chunk of rubber right here. And the front light is all connected. Now I'm in the process of securing our main cable to each one of these crossbars with our little cable clamps. I took the three bolts holding the crossbar onto the side rail out and now I can just pull that up and I can slide the T-nut right into that channel. Then we take our little clamp wrap it around the wire. Then we take one of those little bolts that we bought. This started out as a half inch. I did have to take a little bit off the end so it wouldn't bottom out in the channel. Uh, so it's down to about three eighths of an inch now. So push that through the hole like that. Then take that little T-nut that goes into the slot of our crossbar and thread it on. Just catch a thread, just barely put it on. Then, if I can keep my big mitts out of the way so you can see, we take that T-nut and slide it into there. And this is takes a little bit of finessing and uh, maybe a little swearing to get this in. And we just slide that in just a little bit. The bolts go back into the end of the crossbar. Now we need to finish tightening up that bolt on our clamp. And this is not really easy to do, I'm afraid, but because you're kind of flying blind here. To get the wire down from the roof, we could drill a hole in the roof and use a uh, marine style bulkhead fitting. They work great. I've used them on a sailboat project before and if you do it properly they're totally waterproof. But luckily for us our Forerunner has this channel in this rubber molding alongside the windshield. Our five and a half millimeter wire fits down in that groove perfectly. Now this little plastic piece at the base of the windshield just pops right off. And you can finish running the wire down. 
We've got both sides all done. Wires are coming in at either side. Uh, we did have to put in a splice down here to bring that wire in. And now we're ready to put some power to it. Now early on in this Forerunner build, we prepared ourselves for adding on uh, extra lights, air compressor, all that stuff by building a custom relay and fuse panel. We'll put a link to that video in the video description. Now something like this makes it extremely easy to add on anything. All I need to do is literally just plug the lights into this. The black wire or ground coming from our lights gets grounded to the chassis or body. The red wire or the positive comes down from our lights and gets plugged into here using one of the same kind of connectors we've been putting on our other plugs. Then in here, we have a relay and a fuse for it already in there. Now, if you don't want to go through the hassle of making one of these yourselves, which I don't blame you, it is a lot of work, you can buy a ready-made panel like this. There's one called the S-Pod, and I believe there's a couple others. They're just like this. In fact, they even have switches uh, for the dash included in the kit, I believe, in some of them. Get one of those if you can. That is gonna make your life so much easier when you start adding on lights. They're a real simple plug and play item. Now, although all four of these lights together draw an incredibly low amount of amperage, we still don't recommend that you run through the firewall behind the dash and tie directly into the uh, fuse panel underneath the dash. If you do choose to do that, Make certain that all your wires, your connectors, and especially your switch are rated well above the amperage that these lights draw. If you don't want to go through the hassle of building one of these, you don't want to get an S-Pod, and you don't want to risk a fire running the wires behind your dash, this is your next best thing. This is a relay that you can buy just about anywhere. You can pick them up at the auto parts store, anything like that. Something like this, you can just mount out here anywhere on the fender well, firewall, any place where it's convenient. At the very end of this video and in the video description below, we provide a link to a video that we produced where I explain exactly how to wire up a relay. Now tied directly into that fuse and relay panel we made for under the hood is a switch panel that we made. You'll find a link to that video in the video description down below also. All right, let's see if they work. Yay, they're on! The lights are bright, but not too bright. They light up the ground about 20 feet out, just what we were looking for. We didn't want them to point straight out, wasting most of the light and blinding us when we walk past them. We're also thinking of putting this clear amber film on them. Let us know what you think of that in the comments. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified.